they don't a lot of people don't understand mom is that i you were with me right by my side you were training me and i loved every minute of it i was never ever ever fucking forced someone said mama jane will rob, rob you blind you don't know nothing all right rob me blind are you kidding me i have the life i have today because of this woman Did not. Nope. Mm -mm. Never did. No IRS. She never. They would have had her in jail. Nope. But you know who they had to put her in jail almost? My dad. That, that's the person that started the whole thing was your dad through the divorce. Tried to say, oh, I called you the cash cow. I'd never even heard that phrase. They said, they said, help your mom sue to see her grandkids. <laughs> uh, I would like to see them. You know what? Yeah, she would like to see them. But she probably never will. And that's why Melanie and I, we actually have to do some, some IVF, mom, just to, you know, not you know, just to help her. So I'm going to pay, you know, a couple hundred grand just to, you know, make sure that we have a good, uh, you know, good, healthy birth and all that. Because we've been trying to conceive for, what has it been now? Straight for like, uh, after you had the miscarriage, it was. Um, hey, too much personal. Wait, keep it for the show. Yeah, she don't like me. To, she don't like me to talk too much to you guys, you know. And that's something that my mom always did. Like when I would do interviews back in the day, she'd be like, "Aaron, you're talking too much. Don't tell him everything." Hey, yep. things personal, okay? But yeah, I'm still. I'm very angry at Nick. I'm very angry. I don't blame you. I would be angry too if if my my kid reputation and your career and just sit there and laugh about it you know i would you would be angry too but guess what i'm not going away i'm here i'm gonna write my book and when last time i said i was gonna write a book you guys do know my mom's a new york times bestseller right yeah nick ran out and tried to write a book with dr phil's little son whatever oh yeah dr phil he's so credible anyways <laughs> just like the show the doctor fuck them Anyway, I have the book right here, and it's amazing. It's amazing, and everybody will want to buy it, and it's going to also spur the reality show with Aaron and me, and and Bobby Jean, and Bella, and and Melanie, the last members, the real members of the family. It's not the Carter family. It's actually. The look at these people. Look how rude. Look how rude these people, Mom. They're like Nick can even have superior sperm to Aaron. He can knock a girl up, no problem. Has three kids. Where's your kids, Aaron? I don't know. Where's Nick's older son that you guys don't even know about? Hey, Nick and your dad have little spawn all over the planet. You hear that? Nick and my dad, they got spawns everywhere. They got, uh, oh, they're calling us the Manic Duo. Ooh, that sounds like a good song. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, mom, I thought I, I'm, I'm writing this song called. <laughs> you guys, do, you, do you guys know that like my mom helped write Aaron's party? Do you guys know that my mom helped like write How I Beat Shaq? Like she's in there. Uh, uh, how could you be playing if you're still in bed? Are you getting sick? Did you hit your head? <laughs> you won't catch. And you know what? I was telling them, I was like, um, they did that song, Backstreet Boys, on their album. I don't know if it was Black and Blue or Millennium, but they, it was like number nine. And it was called The Perfect Fan. And it was about their, their, their moms. Nick was the only one that didn't show up to sing a song about his mother. Yeah, because he's got a lot of guilt. Guilt, yeah, why? Guilt, why? Uh, uh, you know. Because he was not there for his family, what, like he promised. I said, Nick, I will make you a star, but you need to make sure you take care of your family. And he didn't. As soon as he got rich, he ran off with Mandy Williford. Williford uh, it was just insane, the things that he did. He was gone. We never got to see him. Nope. We never got to see him. I saw Nick probably like two or three weeks out of each year. And, and on top of that, right before you signed your contract with uh, Transcontinental, the night before, he said, 
Oh, uh, I have to confess that uh, Lou Pearlman molested me. And I, that's the reason why I don't want Aaron to sign on this contract. So I had to go to the court and say that the next day that this happened. And so that's why we did not sign the deal that we were supposed to sign the Transcontinental because I think it was because Nick was jealous, didn't want you to sign. And so he came up with the story that Lou Pearlman molested him. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of you, Nick. I'm ashamed how you've treated your family. I'm ashamed how you've treated our mother. And I will, uh, they go, yeah, if the restraining order comes, that's his obsession with AC, not the other way around. Yeah, Nick's obsessed with me. Correct. You hear what that person just said, mom? They said, yep, if another restraining order comes around, that's Nick's obsession with me. You hear that? You guys hear that? It's the truth. Keep Aaron from signing because he was so jealous of his brother. Wow. That he and then and then when I turned eighteen, he said, "Oh, uh, you owe me, um, you owe me four hundred thousand dollars. I gave that money to mom and dad when you were five years old to start your career. Did that ever happen?" No, that's not the way it happened, and that's something we can talk about later, which went through the courts. So, it all- oh, it went through the scene. It went through the courts. Yeah. And then on my 18th birthday, you know, what my brother did, he broke my nose in a hotel room and made me sign a check to him for a hundred thousand dollars and said, Oh yeah, by the way, throw in an extra 10 grand in there for uh, the taxes. Well, didn't your dad also beat you up? Dad made me go deaf in my ear. He shot a 44 Magnum right next to the, his big gun. And he made me deaf in my ear and my ear bled. And then Ginger, his ex-wife attacked me. BJ attacked me. Angel attacked me. And, the, and they all attacked me for money on that day. And, and then dad made me go to the bank and forge your name. Dad made me go to BANC of America and forge your name. Your, he, he waited outside while I forged your signature to get my money. What state was that? Florida, Orlando. America. Yeah, B A N C of America, the trust one. Oh, I thought I think it's only Bank of America. No, there's B A N K and B A N C. B A N C of America is the trust. Oh, so that's how he get it all. Huh? Yeah, and then he maybe get on the phone, and then he's like, "You owe me, you know, four hundred thousand dollars in management commissions." And I said, "No, I don't, Dad." I said, "I've been working my whole life for this. I'm getting out." And it was my 18th birthday, Mom, and he grabbed me pinned me on the ground and he grabbed the 44 Magnum and he blew it in the ground, my ear and my eye started bleeding and I just wrote the check and I called Steven Canizio, my buddy, and he came and he picked me up and I left right away. And I went uh, to California. Oh, you were a victim, definitely. There's, well, there's oh, so, uh, oh, uh, I love how all these, these accounts, they're calling me crazy. Me, though, mom, mom, mom. Was you... I the one who was stealing your money? Nope, huh? nope, Did nope. I get a dime of that shit? Nope, no. nope. Surviving on my own. We proved that through uh, through uh, lie detector tests, through marriage boot camp, rebuilding my mom and I's relationship, and look how great we're doing now. They go, without Nick, you're nothing. Actually, without Jane Carter, Nick is nothing. Yes, Nick is nothing. How about that, bitch? I made, Sorry, I mom. I made him. She made him. I'm his mother. And All right. I nurtured that talent. And he can say he forgets it, but guess what? You can't fucking forget it. And you're going to have to live with it till the day you die, son. They go, so traumatic. You have gone through so much. Yes, we have. And you know who's gone through the most? This beautiful woman right here. And, yes, she's, and she's still standing. All right? And, and, that's, and, and that's how Nick... That's how Nick treats his mother when he and when allegedly Lauren Kitts, both of her parents are alcoholics and they live with him. Well, how nice for them. How nice for them, right? Oh, but not you, you know why? You know why they live with him and, and why he doesn't take care of? Because he can't control us. Without yeah. Jane Carter, there would be no Nick Carter, you dumbasses. Not That's without you, you, you. What do you? Oh, I. I. Every. What, what do you I think? Nick for? is God. What did I ask for from him? Except that. Hey, thanks, mom, for what you did. This thank person. You. This mom, person said. This person said to me that I fucked up your life. No, you didn't. No, you know what? 
Nick did. Nick did. There you go. Yep. With his contingent love. Oh, if you want to be in my life, you got to go to 10 therapists a week and then you got to show me how, how you can jump off the Tampa Bay Bridge. That's... Well, you know what he did with the restaurant? You know what he did to, to make me get earned that 25000 I had to lose a bunch of weight. Did you hear that? My, my, my brother, Nick body shamed my mom and in order for her to do that, he, he forced her to lose weight. Yeah. To this girl goes, this is awkward. Some things don't need to be put out there, man. This is 2021. Well, guess what? You've got to realize this is the fucking truth and there's a lot more than this. A lot more. And no, you're not going to sit here and say my mom ruined her own life. No, she didn't. No, she no. did not. No, I done wrong. What my mom done? has never done anything else but be the most selfish, most beautiful, precious woman there is. And I work and I cook. And you're gonna body shame your mom and say you gotta lose fifty pounds. If uh, I don't care what size my mom was, whatever she needs, I'm there. If I send my mom seafood, I send my her favorite kind of fish. You know, I, I'm, I deal with that myself. You know, and then, and then freaking what the fuck? Why did I do this? Another thing that that happened, that, which was really horrible, was uh, Vanity Fair. When, Leslie was doing her first video, okay, mm. her first show, for her song, like, wow, it was her first song. He was so jealous that he sent in, him and Kenneth Creer sent in somebody from Vanity Fair. It was supposed to be a closed set, and they went in there, and they, if you read the article about Leslie Carter, what they said, they said she should have been on cocaine. And she was 15 years old. They said she, she she was on cocaine? And she should have been on cocaine. They said the that... Director. The director. The director. Oh, the director of the Vanity Fair thing said Leslie should have been on cocaine because she was overweight? No, the director of her video brought in Vanity Fair and they wrote an article. And it was Gregory Dark or something. It was some kind of famous producer at the time. And, and, and Kenneth Queer and Nick Carter... And uh, Baxter Boys Nick did not want Leslie to have a career, and they they shamed her and said she should have been on cocaine. They put that in the article. Yes, it's in there. You can read it. Read it. I read it and I felt so horrible for my daughter. It was horrible. Yes. They said she should be on cocaine because she was too fat. Hmm. And then right when Leslie died, guess who came out there on the cover of People magazine the week she died? Adele, who was very happy. Okay. Leslie was the most talented and uh, all, all of us put together, just so you guys know. She had the best voice. She had the best and voice. They, they 